privilege and the great pleasure, joy, and blessing today to read in your hearing the word of God, thus saith the Lord at Ezekiel chapter 43. Ezekiel chapter 43. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Kibar, and I fell upon my face, and the Lord and the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me, and he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, Forever in my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. In their setting of their threshold by my thresholds, and their post by my posts, and the wall between me and them, they have been, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore I have consumed them in mine anger. Now let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou, son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. 
And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the comings in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and do them. This is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain. The whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. And these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. The cubit is a cubit and and hand breadth, even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth a cubit, and the border thereof, by the edge thereof, round about, shall be a span, and this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit, and from the lesser settle even to the greater settle shall be four cubits, and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns, and the altar shall be twelve cubits long, twelve broad, square in the four squares thereof. And the settle shall be fourteen cubits long and fourteen broad in the four squares thereof. And the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about and his stairs shall look toward the east. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon. And thou shalt give to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me to minister unto me, saith the Lord God, a young bullock for a sin offering. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof, and put it on the four horns of it, and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about, thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And on the second day thou shalt offer a kid of the goats without blemish for a sin offering and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock when thou hast made an end of cleansing it thou shalt offer a bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish and thou shalt offer the the Lord and the priests shall cast salt upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days 
shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they create them. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day, and so forward, the priests shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. Shall we pray? Holy Father God in heaven, I praise you, Lord, for your holy word, even if others do not. I praise you and I thank you for your Holy Spirit, who teaches us your holy word and who helps us to understand it and who does uh, millions of other things in our souls, our spirits, our hearts and minds that we don't even know about uh, with your holy word. It does something. Lord, sometimes just reading your holy word does something in my spirit and in my soul. Even though I may not fully understand the passage, I don't know what that is about, but I thank you for it. Your holy word has a warming uh, aspect to it in my heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And I believe that is the case for all people who are born again. And Lord, I thank you for that. And I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to hide your holy word in our hearts and in our spirits and in our minds. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to love it, to cherish it, and to obey the principles that you want us to obey. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to apply it to our lives. Help us to love it more, to cherish it more, to share it with others, and to... Um, preach your holy gospel from it. Uh, not only, Lord, uh, in the future, but even today. Save those who are lost. Revive those who are saved. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another Christmas and uh, another Christmas season even though it is not a merry one for many people. It is a merry one for those of us who believe in you um, and who are born again by you, saved by you, and is only merry because you came to suffer, to bleed, and to die on the cross for our sins, to be buried and to rise again for our souls. And we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the White House daily reading of the Chronological Bible episode number 32, where I read the Holy Bible in the King James Version each day in chronological order. 
this unique Bible and this unique viewpoint allows us to read the whole Bible as a single true story and to see the unfolding of God's plan in history through His Holy Word. Today we are reading Genesis chapter 31. Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for your holy word. Please fill us all, all who are saved with the power of your Holy Spirit and speak to our hearts from your holy word in the way that you see fit. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray and for us say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, I am the distinct and the great pleasure to read in your hearing the Word of God, God, chapter 31. In the King James Version of the Chronological Bible. And he heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and behold it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's continence that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father, the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times but God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, The speckled shall be thy wages, then all of the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, The ring straight shall be thy higher, then bear all of the cattle ring straight. Thus saith God, Pardon me. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And I came and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see all of the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out 
from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Padanaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey. And they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stole away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives, taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me? and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabret and with harp, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. And thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure, thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. 
before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them, and Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. And Jacob was wroth, and showed with Laban, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast to search all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was born of beasts I... Pardon me. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand is thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God hath seen mine affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar, and Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones, and they took stones, and made an heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jegasahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid and Mitzpah. For he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. 
If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us, and Jacob swear by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread, and they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them, and Laban departed and returned unto his place. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we pray? Holy <clears throat> Father God, we praise you and we thank you for here another true and touching story in your holy word. So powerful and so meaningful and so rich. <clears throat> Help us to take heed to it. Help us to hide it in our hearts and help us to meditate on it. Help us to learn many things from it, not only today, but in days to come. Help us, Lord, to apply it to our lives. Help us to obey the principles that we see in it. Help us to share your holy word with others and to preach your holy gospel to others from it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Make sure back there, over here, that is cut off and that is cut off. And this one as well. And this one as well. You already got that one cut off over here? That one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, uh, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International. With the scripture and the sense podcast, episode number 733 where I simply read the word of God and give the sense of it or the understanding of it 
based on an authoritative commentary source such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary and or the Matthew Henry Commentary or some other reputable commentary or study Bible. This podcast is based upon Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8 where it says Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So therefore the aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the word of God and the giving of the sense of it along with prayer, it is my humble prayer that the church would be revived again and that the world would be awakened and saved from the wrath of God to come and from the eternal burning hell by believing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ based upon what Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Today, beloved, we're reading Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Please grant your help and the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to understand your holy word. And, Lord, to have your holy word to impact our lives greatly. And that you would help us to apply your holy word to our lives and to obey it and to live by it and to share it with others. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray and for his sake. Amen. Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 14 through 16. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. A day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I just read in your hearing Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. Now here is the sense of it. Yea, the understanding of it first from the Matthew Henry commentary, a more devotional commentary. This warning of approaching destruction is enough to make the sinners in Zion tremble. It refers to the great day of the Lord, the day in which he will show himself by taking vengeance on them. This day of the Lord is very near. It is a day of God's wrath, wrath to the utmost. It will be a day of trouble and distress to sinners. Let them not be laid asleep by the patience of God. What is a man profited 
if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Let us flee from the wrath to come and choose the good part that shall never be taken from us. Then we shall be prepared for every event. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now from the Bible knowledge commentary, more of a background and uh, informational commentary that brings uh, the scriptures uh, out and, uh, and helps you to understand the background of the Holy Scriptures and helps you to understand it better. It says, to awaken the complacent nation to its peril, the prophet returned to the theme stated in verse 7, the great day of the Lord. Grammatically, the verse stresses the word near, which is first in the sentence in Hebrew. The fearful wrath of God was to come on the nation quickly, since Zephaniah wrote shortly after 622 B.C., the year of Josiah's partial revival. The day of the Lord was, in fact, imminent. In 605, only 17 years after Josiah's revival, Judah under Jehoiakim became a vassal of Babylon, and many of Judah's best young men were deported. Under Jehoiakim's equally wicked successor, Jehoiakim, the city was again besieged by Nebuchadnezzar in 597, and some 10,000 Jews were deported. Under Zedekiah, the city was under a long siege by Nebuchadnezzar and was finally destroyed in the summer of 586. The prophet began by calling the nation to hear his words for the day of Babylonian terror would cause the people to cry in bitterness, and even the mighty Jewish warrior would retreat in fear and horror. The wrath of Almighty God on sinners is depicted by such words as distress, anguish, trouble, ruin, darkness, gloominess, clouds, and blackness. When the Babylonian soldiers did barge into the city, the Jerusalemites were distressed and in anguish. Their houses were ruined and the sky was dark from the smoke of the buildings set on fire as the Babylonian hordes rushed to conquer, kill, and ravish. They sounded the trumpet and shouted in battle in their moves against not only Jerusalem, but also other fortified cities in Judah. Soldiers at the corner towers, normally strongholds of defense against attacking enemies, were Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy. Thank you for being able, for helping us to see ourselves in this day and time text and what is happening to us. Help us to do what you wanted your children to do back then. Help us to humble ourselves and help us to pray and help us to seek your face. And help us to turn from our wicked ways as your people. And help us to repent and get back to you, our first love. 
Now, Lord, we pray that you would grant me your energy, your grace, and your strength, your unction and your anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach and to proclaim your holy gospel. And, Lord, I do open the eyes of the blind, unstop deaf ears, those who are with us now, those who will be with us later on today on demand. Have your Holy Spirit to extend its reach to every lost soul who hears the preaching of the gospel. Help them to understand it, help them to believe it, and to be saved today. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're with us today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins, uh, allow me to show you how you can be saved from the power of sin, the pain of sin, and the punishment of sin in that awful place called hell. First, please understand and accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. So have I, so has the Pope, so has Joel Osteen, so has the Dalai Lama, or whoever your spiritual hero is. They have sinned against God, for the Bible says we all have sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody has sinned. Have you ever uh, dishonored God by taking his name in vain, by cursing while using his name, swearing about something, using his name when you knew you were lying? Have you ever dishonored or disobeyed your parents in any way, shape, form, or fashion at any time. You have sinned against God. Have you ever coveted after what other people have? Have you ever lusted after somebody or something? Have you ever stolen anything? Even if it's uh, some money out of your father's pocket or drawer or your mother's purse when you were younger to buy something you were not supposed to buy. Have you ever lied about anything? The Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, that awful place we call hell. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Secondly, I want you to understand and accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin. Always, always. Please understand that nobody has ever gotten away with sin. Sin was paid for by somebody. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. This means that we die because of sin. Nobody escapes. We die because of sin. We don't die because of the coronavirus plague. We don't die because of cancer. We don't die because of natural causes. We die because of sin. Sin. We're sinners. And that's why your body will one day, no matter how beautiful you think you are, no matter how wonderful you think you are, and you may be all that, but you will die. You will be brought down to a grave. Your body will be put in a grave. And sad to say, you'll be forgotten by many people. You'll be dead and gone. As uh, someone said in song, the 
body goes to a grave, the soul goes to eternal death in that awful place called hell if we don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in this life. Remember now, you can't believe in Jesus Christ after you're dead. Now, you can, but it'll be too late. You will already be in hell, and I want to serve notice on you and tell you something that most preachers have never told you. You need to understand that once you die, less than a second, immediately, you will lift up your eyes in the torments of the burning hell. If you have never truly believed in the Lord Jesus Christ in this life. That that is a biblical fact. And you will be there throughout eternity. There's no such thing as purgatory. That's made up. It is apocryphal. It cannot be proven. There's nowhere in the Bible that teaches a purgatory. A place where you can go and get sins purged. It's not true. Jesus never said anything about a purgatory. And when it comes down to hell, the only somebody that you can... Uh, really listen to and believe is Jesus Christ. He preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. He preached more on hell than any prophet, any preacher, any apostle, or any writer. He preached more on hell than he did about heaven because he does not want you to go to hell. That's why he came and suffered and bled and died and was humiliated before the world and died for your sins and mine was buried and rose on the third day. And all you have to do right now, dear sinner, believe in him. Give him your heart. Believe in him with all of your heart. He deserves it. Believe that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins right now. That he was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. That is the gospel, dear friends. That is the good news. So I want you to notice, thirdly, you need to accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. If you, if you have never truly believed in Jesus Christ, and if you're already saved, you know that you're saved, and you're not on the road to hell. What you need to be doing right now, instead of listening to me, is getting somebody else on the phone and telling them that they need to tune in right now. Particularly if they're in line right now to get uh, a test to see whether or not they have the coronavirus plague. Particularly if they are at home on their sick bed, coughing and and trying to get some air. Especially if they're in the hospital, call a nurse and tell the nurse to hook up the phone to their ears, to get a ear some earphones on their ears and listen, because even if they can't talk, they can believe. That's what you need to be doing. If you can't witness to them, if you have not witnessed to them yourself because they're your family members and you're afraid to witness to them because they, uh, they're they not going to listen to you. And they might listen to me. That's what you need to be doing. If you're already saved, you don't need to be listening to me. You're already saved. Get somebody else who you know is lost. They may be a church member and lost and on their way to hell. I was in, I was a member of two churches three churches, four churches throughout my growing up. And if I had died before December the 19th, 1979, at the age of 19 years old, I would have died and gone to hell. Right from the church pews. They didn't even know there was a hell to avoid. Never heard the gospel. So you can be religious and a church member and lost and on your way to hell. And by the way, there are many church members in hell today. Probably just as many as as, as out and out lost people. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. One day you're going to be surprised who is in heaven and in hell. You're going to be shocked. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, when he was preaching on hell in one of his friends on hell, he said, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. 
and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. You say, well, preacher, surely Jesus Christ didn't mean for us to cut off. Why not? Compared to going to hell, yes, it would be better for you to cut off your... I'm, I'm, I'm here today, and I'm, I'm backing up exactly what Jesus said. Compared to the burning hell forever... Yes, if your if your hands and your feet are keeping you from trusting Christ as Savior and keeping you from uh, uh, doing the right thing, and you're constantly doing evil with your hands and your feet, I say cut them off too. Cut your hand off, cut your feet off, and go to heaven <laughs> instead of going to hell. Uh, I back it up 100%. I don't think he was playing at all. I believe he meant what he said compared to going to hell, being in hell forever. I agree with Jesus Christ. Hell is a very real place. Hell is a very sad place. And hell is bad news, my dear friend. This is a divine appointment for you. I had my divine appointment December the 19th, 1979. When a young man came to my dorm room, room 316, in the locker house dorm room in the Air Force, with a big old Bible, he was nervous, he was jittery, and he showed me the same things I just showed you, and that I'm going to show you. And for the first time, readjust that. Let's cut off too much. And for the first time, I heard the gospel for real. I got born again. I got saved that night, December the 19th, 1979. And you can get saved today. This could be your day. This is your divine appointment. If you're here, you're here for a reason. God has you here. You may be religious. You may be a church member. You may come from a long line of church members and preachers and deacons, as I did. I was lost and on my way to hell. I hated preachers with a passion because my dad was a preacher and very popular. I hated church. And the one thing I hated about my mother is because she made sure we went to church. She, she was one of those old-fashioned mothers who didn't play. You you going to church or you won't play football. That's it. And you're going to sing in the choir or you're not going to play football. That was worse. I was religious but lost. I was in church but on my way to hell. You may be that way. And if that's the case, dear friend, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, not the church. Hell is bad news, but I have some good news for you. And Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, the most loving words ever said to mankind in the history of the world. The most wonderful words ever said. Jesus Christ said them. This is why the whole world shut down just a few days ago. Because Jesus Christ said words like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You didn't hear Jesus Christ say you have to work for your salvation or keep the law for your salvation or give money to the church for your salvation or serve in the church for your salvation. He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has already done all of the work you need. He's the only one who has kept the law. He never committed a sin in word, thought, or deed. And he came as the Lamb of God through the genius and love of God to suffer and to bleed and to suffer and to die 
on the cross for your sins and mine. He was buried and he rose on the third day. He is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. Believe in him. Put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul, and he will save you. Just believe in your heart. Follow the simple instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ for whosoever. The word whosoever means anybody at any time. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in God's sight. No matter what evil you have done or who you did it with, God loves you that much that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for your sins and for mine and for the entire world. He is the eternal sacrificial lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. That's why Walmart shut down a few days ago, Target too, because of this man, Jesus Christ. He has not been here for some 2,000 years, but Walmart has to shut down and everybody else has to shut down on Christmas Day because of this man named Jesus. That's why you honor him and you may not even be saved. You respect him and you may not even be saved. You have to bow down to him and you might not be saved, but you can get saved today. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Confess Jesus Christ with your mouth that he is your Lord and your Savior. You want him to be your Lord and Savior. And shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the hell I just got through talking with you about. And saved to heaven. For whosoever, there's that word again, whosoever, anybody at any time. Red, yellow, black, or white. We're all precious in God's sight. Makes no difference whether or not you are a Republican or a Democrat or Independent. Makes no difference if you are with the KKK or with uh, Black Panthers makes no difference. Whosoever means whosoever. Whatever you have done, whatever you're doing, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, and thou you shall be saved. You say, well, preacher, why do you preach the gospel every day? This is the most important thing I do in this world. I know you might want to go get to something else and do something else and listen to me do something else. But this is the most important thing I do in my life is preach the gospel to those who are not saved. So, dear friend, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. That's all you have to do. Just follow the simple instructions of Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth, the word believeth means to have faith in, to trust in. That's it. Nothing else. I know it may sound hard to believe, but it's true. Right now, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ with your heart. Call on his name in prayer and seal the deal. Let him know that you want him to be your Savior, that you believe in him, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul. Join me in praying the sinner's prayer right now. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. As you believe in your heart, in Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day by the power of God. Let's pray. Holy Father God, I acknowledge and I admit that I am a sinner. 
I have indeed committed some of the sins that the preacher talked about at the top of his message. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my wretched soul. Please forgive me of all of my sins and failures and faults. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered, who bled, and who died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day by your power, Now, Lord, I admit it, I don't understand it all, but I do believe it all. Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart and save my soul from hell. The hell that I deserve. And save my soul to the heaven that I do not deserve. Because of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to truly repent and to be sorry for all of my sins and help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believed in your heart, brothers and sisters in Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on doing the most important thing in life. And that is believing and receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book free of charge titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Have you checked that recently? Okay. Uh, Check it now and make sure that they can read that book freely. It's free of charge. It's a free download. Our technician is checking it now to make sure it works just fine for you. I believe you can also go to Gospel Light House of Prayer International and read it there as well. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you received the free gift of salvation uh, brought about through Jesus our Lord as your Savior today, Please email that to us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some that we want to send you to help you to grow in the faith and become the strong Christian disciple that God wants you to be. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would allow me to say it, at this time we will resume the standing between the living and the dead service number one, already in progress at the point of Charles Spurgeon's fantastic book, Morning and Evening. 
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and yes, even foes in the family, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House family devotional reading of Dr. Charles Haddon Spurgeon's classic book, Morning and Evening. This is the podcast, and this is episode number 343. Episode number The Prince of Preachers, Dr. Spurgeon, chose for our reading, our devotional reading today, Amos chapter 9, verse 9, and it reads, For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Every sifting comes by divine command and permission. Satan must ask leave before he can lay a finger upon Job Nay, more, in some sense, our siftings are directly the work of heaven. For the text says, I will sift the house of Israel. Satan, like a drudge, may hold the sieve, hoping to destroy the corn, But the overruling hand of the master is accomplishing the purity of the grain by the very process which the enemy intended to be destructive. The devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, and I'm adding that part. Precious but much sifted corn of the Lord's floor be comforted by the blessed fact that the Lord directeth both flail and sieve to his own glory and to thine eternal profit and good. The Lord Jesus will surely use the fan which is in his hand and will divide the precious from the vile. All are Not Israel that are of Israel, the heap on the barn floor is not clean provender, and hence the winnowing process must be performed. In the sieve, true weight alone has power. Husks and chaff, being devoid of substance, must fly before the wind, and only solid corn will remain. Observe the complete safety of the Lord's wheat. Even the least grain has a promise of preservation. God himself sifts, and therefore it is stern and terrible work. He sifts them in all places among all nations. He sifts them in the most effectual manner, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. And yet for all this, not the smallest, lightest, or most shriveled grain is permitted to fall. 